everybody. Today is, what are we doing today? I've got to think more before I start talking in front of the camera. I think today we're actually going to service Tiny One. So it is here at the development block. Um, we brought that down last week. So it needs a service. I'm pretty sure it could be a 500 hour service. So that is engine oil um, and filters, fuel filters, um, we'll probably, we've been doing the final drives on that every 250 hours, I think. Um, and yeah, air filters, cabin filters, all of that, give it a good check over. There is a couple of bolts missing, um, or there is one bolt missing on the drive sprocket, so we've got to find out, um, or we've got to get another one of them. But um, anyway, I think that's what we'll start doing today. I might actually just go and grab it and bring it back over here. I don't think... I don't think we'll put it on the shed yet. It's not, um, we would test it out, but what I think we'll do is we'll wait for the floor to deteriorate. So it might be a year or two until there's a few nicks and scratches and cuts and scrapes and all of that fun stuff. And then we might put the dozer on there. But for now, it looks too nice to do that. So what I'll probably do is I might even just bring it out, even out here somewhere. Um, yeah, just so it's a bit more accessible but we don't want to make a big mess. Um, yeah, obviously turning around too much and screwing up all the, all the, I don't think you'd call it gravel, but just the dirt we've got here. What is that doing there? That is a bit of metal that holds on the seating boots of the AFM. So that could probably cause some damage on some rubber. So anyway, we will head over here. Make sure there's oil here to start with. Yep. in second gear just not flat out the revs but um, just the water temp is the water temp slowly creeping up um, I'm just watching the torque converter temp because when you're doing this obviously it's putting a lot of load on the torque converter so I'm making sure it's not getting up too high um, but I'd say once we get the water temp to about um, I don't know maybe 70 or something like that I think that's all we're gonna need I don't think we need to get up to full working temperature just for the oil change.
like Jay saw, is putting the planter away. It's a big beast. I don't know, you keep forgetting. You, you start working on Tiny Tot and you just trying to get your arms in there and you can't and it's just tight and hard to work on. And then you, um, yeah, then when you go back to the D11s, they're huge in comparison. Well, the top of the track is about my chest height. So, just for a bit of fun, let's do a comparison. So, that's the top of the track up there. My head comes to there. So it's a little bit different. So we're, we're at the D11, uh, the D4, the top of the tracks come to maybe just the bottom of the bottom of the final drive. Don't get one of these things to um, redo your back garden. Um, it wouldn't look that good. But um, yeah, it's just great. This little this little D4, it's it's just good for good for what we've been using it for, and obviously it doesn't. You can just go and do a quick job, and you know it doesn't mess up the dirt and and that just for a little a little job. So it's um, really good for that. So anyway, what was I doing? Came over here for a reason. Oh yeah, so I'll cut this bladder out. Well, cut this bladder down so it can fit underneath there and I think that'll that'll be the go I think I might even put it on a pallet and um, I think that'll be our best bet I've just had a better idea and I think I'll do it before Brad or Phil come down and tell me not to but that one's got the metal cage already. That was going to have parts put in it, but we can always cut up another one. So yeah, that'll make it a bit, bit nicer just having the, the bottom section of the cage um, to hold the bladder. Um, and yeah, make it a bit easier, the forklift and that. So we can scoot that under there and then just when we're done, we'll lift up the dozer, back it out. Then it's got the tap on the bottom of them that we can empty into. Um, I think we've got another shuttle that's got used engine oil in it, which is propping up the auger at the minute. It's a little bit untidy, but you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Still gonna have to manhandle that under there. If I'd have organised myself a bit better, I would have driven over the top of it. Ah well.
There's a little bung in there I gotta get. I'm pretty sure might be a 20 21 22 mil or something well it's probably imperial but i'll probably get a few different sockets oh. you do get a bit of exercise working on them it's like a big jungle gym for adults always climbing over something but you can get into the bits you need to get to that is really nice the d4 can be a bit of a pain as you've probably seen in previous videos of brad's brad working on it it can be quite frustrating when you can't get to the bit you need to get to that's the other thing that gets you confused because the dozer is so jolly big you get what you think is a so the socket size you need but it's not right the nuts and bolts are always a lot bigger than you think. That oil doesn't look too bad, actually. So good. Something I learnt, I don't know if it's true or not, but if you get... I just won't show my wife this, but if you get a bit on your finger, like that, wipe it on a rag. And if your finger's clean, it means there's still a bit of life left in the oil. But if you wipe it, and it's still all your fingers stained it means you definitely need to replace it just some potential dodgy practices that we we do sometimes but yes with these things and all our tractors and that we do stick to the servicing servicing schedule but sometimes if you have a machine that an old machine that you don't know how long it's been sitting somewhere and you just yeah you don't really know when the oil was changed last so it can be a good quick way of just knowing whether it's immediate urgent needs to be done or you've got a bit of time this is a lot easier than doing it with drums out in the paddock like we usually do i like it right we'll let that drain i think brad's got the filters anyway for the fuel and that so I'll have to wait for him well the oil's all drained out of the bottom but what I'm gonna do I should say what I'm gonna try to do is not make a mess but I'm gonna just punch a little hole in the oil filters here just a little bit down so I can drain the oil we don't need to drain the whole filter but just enough so um, when you're undoing it it doesn't all come out and make an even bigger mess while you're trying to turn it around so we'll see See how we go. I actually thought I had a center punch, but I grabbed the wrong one, so. Usually I go to all this effort and I spill the drum anyway. So let's just see how this this works this time.
Righto, so I'll let that one drain a bit. Then um, what you might have seen, a little trick if anyone is interested. When you do bung up, uh, punch a hole in the filter, sometimes it'll just keep dribbling as you're undoing it and it still gets a bit messy, but I just got a bit of rag and jammed it in the hole and that saves that from happening. So, we'll let that one drain down there and um, tighten up the bung underneath, have to remember to do that. Right, well, the filters are in. Um, I can just, 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 just get them tight enough by hand. So you go until the O-ring touches and then um, then you've got to go a full spin. So one more full turn and um, just, or very close. I probably sh need another, however long, but it'll, um, it'll do, it won't come off. So um, yeah, on to the next thing. Now, the other thing that I think we'll do um, is we've got the centrifuge here. Now, I haven't actually done one of these before, so we'll just see how we go, see how much mess I can make. But, um, yeah, I think, I think the last time we did it was when we did the BG treatment, um, so the oil treatment and all of that, just to try and help... So it was showing signs that it was a little bit tired this the engine in this thing and um yeah i think it did it did do something did stop a bit of smoke but the treatment but um yeah it'll be interesting to see how much how much gunk is in the centrifuge here so basically all it does is spins the oil really really quickly so all the heavy heavy um soot and stuff that's trapped in the oil gets flung to the outside um so yeah that's all it all it is. Very basic. Just spins around like that really quick. I'm not sure. I don't really know what I'm doing to be honest. Take her over here. So guys, we've got Brad here. He's uh, doing what he does best. Yep. Playing games on his phone. Tetris. Tetris. No, there's better games than that now, Brad. Is there? Yeah, yeah. I'm showing my age. <laughs> <coughs> um, I'm just double-checking all specifications for the transmission. On the dump truck? Mm. What have you done now? Oh, it's a bit low. Fluid? I can't remember. I think it's a Cat 30 trans. Yes, so there's a lot of, a lot of checking, double-checking, because it does pay to double-check. But I'm just... Not double checking, I'm just going for it. I've never done this before, but. Let's just see what happens. Probably make a mess. Well, the, the 30 will give us a uh, good temperature to 50 degrees. So that's what we will go with. At least you're sorted out. You'll need to ask Ronald. I need Ron back. Uncle Ron. Uncle Ron it is. Yeah. Now. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, I'm making a mess already. How many mils do you reckon of gunk is on this? 
Four mil? Two. I'm going with one. Ooh. That's probably close to the four mil, Brad. I think you might be on it. I'll get a good chunk. is a big chunk of soot from the oil. But I would be... I reckon... Brad, I reckon you nailed that. Does that look like four mil to you? ready to go back in that was interesting it still still catches a lot of soot which is always good for the engine it saves that all being circulating in the oil So the oil pressure, I should show you, there's little jets there and there. So the oil pressure coming up, comes out those jets and makes that spin. So that's why all the other stuff is flung very, very hard. I don't know the RPM. I'm sure in one of the previous videos it was said. So, yes. I've been extremely slack. I've usually have a magnet on the mount of my my vlogging camera, so that's a tripod, and I usually have a magnet underneath it as well. But that broke off a while ago, and I haven't fixed it yet, so it does make it a bit tricky. I need to find time to make up a proper bracket for it. There we go. Well, it's actually lunchtime now, so we'll come back. Um, where are we up to? We've still got air cleaners, fuel filters, and coolant filter to do, and need to chase up a bolt for the um, sprocket, drive sprocket, wherever it is. There's some blanks and there's some there's one that's actually just completely missing. That's a blank, that's a blank. There it is, that one there. So gotta get that one sorted. Give it a good check over. Check that we're not missing or don't have any broken bolts on the undercarriage. And um 
should keep us out of trouble for a bit.